Have you ever wished you could strap a bunch of balloons to your house and then just fly away? Well, in the movie Up from Pixar, that's exactly what happens. Except it's an animated movie, so it can ignore the laws of physics. But what if it didn't? How many balloons would you really need to lift the house from up? The filmmakers at Pixar are absolute masters of storytelling. They will do anything to make sure that their stories are incredible, even if that means sacrificing the laws of physics to achieve them. But I mean, that's understandable. Realism hasn't exactly been a priority for Pixar, what with all of the toys, cars, and fish that can talk. <laughs> so play nice. Pete Docter directed not only Up, but Monsters Inc., Inside Out, and more recently, Soul. What can I say? The guy knows how to make a great movie. First thing they did when we pitched this film was like to calculate how many balloons would it actually take? 26.5 million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 10,000, so we cheated. There's a great analysis on the Film Theory channel that estimates the house would require 31 million party balloons just to float. That is a lot of balloons. In fact, the closest we ever came to that number in real life was back in 1986, when one and a half million balloons were released upon Cleveland, Ohio. As cool as it looks, it was a bit of a disaster. No one's ever attempted this sort of thing again, but that's still only 5% of the balloons that would be needed to lift the house. If only there was a way to show you 100%. Thirty-one million balloons. At this scale, you don't even really see individual balloons anymore. Instead, we're treated to a view of the wind currents the balloons ride, because this is how you see wind. All you need is just a really beefy computer. <laughs> However, there's a problem. Using that many party balloons simply isn't feasible. If we wanted to actually do this for real, we'd want to take a page out of David Blaine's book and use weather balloons. But why do balloons go up? It all started a couple thousand years ago with this dude named Archimedes who figured out how buoyant, buoyancy. What do you say? <laughs> Ar Archimedes? Archimedes? Yeah. <laughs> Archimedes? Ah, oh, Eureka, you're right. Basically, this dude Archimedes figured out how buoyancy works. Any submerged object that is lighter than the fluid it pushes aside will float to the top. This is most commonly understood with water, but it applies to air as well because air is a fluid. The idea behind Archimedes' principle is that whenever you displace a fluid, it actually pushes back up by the same amount as the weight of that displaced fluid. Pretty cool, huh? So even though air is pretty lightweight, a big enough volume of air can actually be pretty heavy. If you could displace that with something lighter, you produce an upwards lifting force, and that is called buoyancy. So what is lighter than air? Well, the first thing you're probably all familiar with would be helium. It has a density of 0.18 kilograms per cubic meter, making it seven times lighter than air. But helium still has weight too, which is gonna counteract how much it can lift. Hydrogen, on the other hand, is better. It weighs less, so it can lift more. It's also like significantly easier and cheaper to produce than helium, so like, why don't we put hydrogen in our balloons? Show the world's largest airship heading for Lakehurst, New Jersey, filled with hydrogen, a highly inflammable gas. The airship was hailed by thousands who little dreamed it was their final glimpse of the Hindenburg. Oh yeah, right. It's because hydrogen is incredibly dangerous! Which is unfortunate because we're kind of running out of helium. It's produced as a byproduct of uranium decay over the course of millions of years, combining with pockets of natural gas underground. That's right, to get helium, we drill for it. Don't worry though, for now we still have plenty of helium left, but what if in the future there is a way to harness something even better? Nothing. A vacuum is the lightest possible substance because it literally weighs nothing. It is the absence of everything. It's what outer space is made out of. The problem is that a balloon only works by pressurizing the inside with a gas, which inflates the balloon. The structure comes from that inside pressure. A vacuum, on the other hand, does the opposite, so normal balloons wouldn't work. It requires a strong and rigid structure and is therefore usually made out of like glass or metal, so it's pretty heavy definitely too heavy to fly like a balloon. So imagine a futuristic material that weighs next to nothing but is also incredibly strong. Some sort of maybe graphene or carbon nanotube type deal. I don't know, it's the future. It's all kind of magic anyway. If you could make a giant vacuum balloon, you'd have the most effective lighter than air vehicle possible. Lifting the house from up would need a balloon 75 meters wide. And to be clear, this is the upper limit of theoretical balloon technology. 
What's cool about this idea though is that if the material could be flexible or stiff on command, you'd end up with something you could even deploy in the field. Think of the Fulton Recovery System from Metal Gear Solid 5. In the game, you can extract people by attaching a balloon that inflates and then flies away. I think the idea is that they inflate with helium, but the game already doesn't make sense, so vacuum balloons would have totally worked and also would have been way cooler. So even though this is fantasy, lifting people with balloons is actually super doable. For instance, here's the amazing balloon stunt performed by David Blaine. Ascension is the most ambitious performance of my life. Between the weight of his body and the framework and the electronics, the balloons had to lift about 400 pounds. Although if he had access to a futuristic vacuum balloon, it would only have to be 20 feet wide. Way more tactical. But of course, that wasn't his goal. He was specifically going for the amazing image of a person flying through the sky by just holding onto some balloons. It really is just an absolutely incredible visual, and I think that's what makes the house from up so compelling, because we can imagine a group of balloons just carrying us away. So realistically speaking, what would the house from up look like? Like, what would it look like? <laughs> Interestingly, this has kind of already been done before. Jonathan Trapp managed to get a real house up over 10,000 feet suspended from just balloons. That's really impressive. However, the house was gutted to be as lightweight as possible. So does it even still count as a house? See, here's the thing. The old Queen Anne style house from up is mega heavy. Film theory calculated that it weighs 570,000 pounds. That is several times heavier than an average house. Now, I'm no expert in estimating the weight of houses, but this makes it heavier than the Statue of Liberty. That is a chungus house, my friends. And that might seem completely nuts until you realize that the Hindenburg weighed 480,000 pounds and it flew across the Atlantic Ocean before it exploded. Of course. So to lift the house from up, we need some very robust balloons. Specifically, latex weather balloons meant for carrying experiments high into the atmosphere. Thanks to the help of Diana the physics girl, we know that a two meter wide balloon can lift about eight pounds in addition to the weight of the balloon itself. We are of course oversimplifying a lot of factors here, including how balloon lift actually changes depending on the temperature. They lift more on a colder day. And after crunching all of the numbers, we end up with 80,000 weather balloons. And this is what that looks like. This just might be the closest you'll ever get to seeing the house from up flying with realistic physics. To legitimately do it for real would simply be prohibitively expensive. Keep in mind that each balloon could also fit a person inside of it. Also, in addition to lifting the house, the balloons have to lift themselves too. In fact, the weight of just the balloons accounts for a third of the total flying weight. It's a pretty incredible sight seeing all these balloons lifting a house, but it's easy to see why Pixar decided not to go this realistic route here. Having this many balloons and worrying so much about the physics really would have gotten in the way of the story. Because a movie is just that, a story. It doesn't owe reality anything. It sets its own rules. And in the rules of Pixar, a few thousand party balloons are all you need to fly away from your problems. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This was a really fun video to throw together. There's no sponsor on today's episode. However, we've got a website, quarterdigital.com. Go check it out and subscribe to that because that is probably the best way to support more of these videos. On top of that, we've got a whole bunch of shows exclusively on the website. They're all pretty cool. We brought the vlogs back. We even have Son of a Dungeon, our own D&D campaign using some really cool real-time tech of the whole game board. It's awesome. Also, we have our own version of a masterclass. If you want to get into filmmaking or visual effects. It's called Functional Filmmaking. I even made an episode about how I make these types of science videos. Check it out on the website. All those shows are coming soon. I'm hoping to make a lot more of these videos this year. I want to be on the moon. I want to see how many solar panels power the world. With your support, maybe I'll get to make them this year. Thanks for watching and share the video.